Have you heard of Sjogren's? If you haven't, you aren't alone. There's a lack of awareness in the general public, and even among some in the medical community, around exactly what Sjogren's is. We also know that many people have never heard of Sjogren's, even though it affects upwards of 4 million Americans. And the result is that many Sjogren's patients who present with the classic symptoms of dry eye, dry mouth, fatigue, and joint pain often go undiagnosed for upwards of 2.8 years. Education and information is an important starting point to move awareness and treatment forward. We asked a team of medical Sjogren's experts to explain what Sjogren's is. Sjogren's is a chronic autoimmune rheumatic disease and we think of it as a cousin to lupus or rheumatoid arthritis because there are a lot of overlapping uh, clinical and serological manifestations. But in this case, the body's immune system attacks the moisture producing glands. So some of the most important symptoms are dryness, like dryness of the eyes, the mouth, and other parts of the body. And like other rheumatic diseases, it causes inflammatory fatigue and uh, joint pain and muscle pain, and uh, can also affect the internal organs. So virtually any organ can be affected. Exactly how to diagnose Sjogren's has been an ongoing conversation and debate among medical professionals. Yeah, diagnosis of Sjogren's can be a, a great challenge because there uh, has been disagreement uh, over the years as to what we should call Sjogren's, what uh, criteria we should use to classify or diagnose Sjogren's, uh, what tests should be used, and what the definition of an abnormal test really is. At the present time, it's recommended that a whole variety of tests be done because Sjogren's can affect so many different parts of the body. So we do test to look for uh, objective evidence of dry eyes. Uh, we have tests to measure the production of tears which can be deficient in Sjogren's. We have tests to look for damage on the surface of the eyes as a complication of dry eyes, which is a common manifestation of Sjogren's. We do tests to look for objective evidence of dry mouth. Uh, Sjogren's causes significant dry mouth, uh, decreased salivary flow, so we now have the capability of measuring salivary flow. We can also use imaging studies to look for changes in the salivary glands that indicate that something is wrong. And finally, because Sjogren's is an autoimmune disease like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, we have tests we have to do for autoimmunity. Uh, sometimes uh, we find antibodies in the blood that are markers for the disease and they can greatly help us uh, make a diagnosis when they're present. Uh, in other instances, when the antibodies aren't present, we may do a small biopsy of the salivary glands to look for inflammation, which is one of the uh, hallmarks of the disease. So it's really a combination of tests that must be taken as a whole and uh, considered before an accurate diagnosis can be made. The dryness symptoms for Sjogren's patients are often misunderstood or trivialized. Just starting from dry eyes, I've known people that had to change their careers because of the severity of their dryness in, of their eyes. Um, having pain in your eyes 24-7 is a major quality of life. And I think unless you're an ophthalmologist or an optometrist, at least my group of physicians, I think, don't get it, how bad it is. Same with dry mouth. People can lose all their teeth if it's not recognized what's going on. Now, and the sad thing about that is we can prevent that if we know and just with some simple things. So I think, you know, another area where, you know, awareness is so important among healthcare professionals. For most patients, Sjogren's does not stop with just the dryness symptoms. Other organs are often affected, presenting a more dangerous and complex condition to manage. Beyond the dryness, of course, there are, you know, it can affect any body organ or system. So. Um, I've always had a lot of peripheral neuropathy and pain, so where sometimes I couldn't feel my feet. That affects being able just to go out and take a walk because I really have to focus on my feet and where I'm stepping because I can't feel them like regular people can feel their feet. Um, the fatigue. The fatigue is not the tired that somebody else says they are, but it's just this bone-crushing um, 
toxic, overwhelming, all-engulfing kind of fatigue mm -hmm. that is really hard. You can't necessarily push through it like you can, um, like I could before I had the Sjogren's. Mm -hmm. So someone might say to me, I might say, oh yes, I'm tired today. And they might say, oh yes, I know just how you feel. I'm tired too. Um, I ran all these errands and then I went to the mall. I am just so tired. And what I want to say is, no, no, you don't get it. You don't get it at all. Rather than treating Sjogren's globally in a patient, the approach of many physicians is to deal with the localized challenges and symptoms, which can vary widely from patient to patient. What I like to do, Steve, is divide the body into three parts, the eyes, the mouth, and the internal organ manifestations. And so usually the eye care provider, a cornea specialist, an ophthalmologist, an optometrist will help us get started with treatment for the eyes. Uh, for the mouth, we ask patients uh, how much their uh, symptoms bother them, whether they've had any complications like cavities, mouth ulcers, burning mouth. And so if they do, um, we give them replacement therapy with artificial salivas, we can coat the mouth with a variety of lubricants and gels. But I think our most effective treatments uh, of all for dry mouth would be medicines. Uh, medicines called secretagogues, which help stimulate the moisture producing glands to produce more saliva. These medicines seem to be helpful, not only alleviating uh, the dryness, but other problems related to dry mouth, like altered taste, difficulty swallowing, difficulty speaking. And when you take them for a while, especially at the higher doses, they seem to help dryness problems in other parts of the body as well. So the patient will get tears and gels for her eyes, uh, perhaps artificial saliva and medications for, for dry mouth. And then the treatment for the internal organ manifestations uh, really depend on what the man manifestation is. Um, if it's fatigue, we have medications for that, like hydroxychloroquine that can be useful. Um, that same medicine is very effective, in my opinion, for treating musculoskeletal pain and arthritis. Uh, if it's a more serious problem involving uh, a vital organ, then uh, other stronger medicines uh, called immunosuppressives are often used to treat these these um, more challenging manifestations. At this time, there is no cure for Sjogren's. While critical research and clinical trials for a therapy are ongoing, this is a condition that both the patient and doctor have to work together on to manage the symptoms and lessen the impact of the disease on a patient's life. Sjogren's is a life-altering disease, and a doctor who may look a little bit further and identify that whatever they're dealing with, whether it be a GI specialist, a rheumatologist, a dentist, and an eye care professional have an opportunity to tremendously impact the quality of life for a Sjogren's patient by recognizing that this is part of a bigger picture. Many Sjogren's patients spend a lot of time wondering about their own mental health because they have so many different maladies that are occurring that they think it's in their head. Um, and the, once you're able to identify that all of these disparate things that you're experiencing actually fall under one umbrella is very comforting, even though it doesn't provide an instant solution for it, it helps to explain a lot. It helps them, gives them comfort, it gives them reassurance. Although each Sjogren's patient's symptoms and complications are different, Sjogren's often forces a patient to drastically change how they live their lives. And I look at Sjogren's as like life on a roller coaster, mm -hmm. but it's like a roller coaster that you can't ever get off. You know, there's no exit. It doesn't let you off it, <laughs> you know, at some point. Um, so you're always going kind of up and down and um, just trying to find ways to cope with it, but it changes your life forever. Sjogren's is a life-altering complex disease with serious complications and challenges, but progress is being made in both the speed of which Sjogren's is diagnosed and the options patients have for treatment. The ultimate goal is a better quality of life for all Sjogren's patients. And although there is a lot of work to be done, the good news is we are well on our way towards achieving that goal. For more information about Sjogren's and its many complications and challenges, please visit Sjogren's.org. Thank you for joining us today on Exploring Sjogren's.